So today I'd like to talk a little bit about the history of soil survey and soil classification in Canada. And seeing as you've been directly involved with over half of that history between your time as a soil surveyor and uh, involvement with the Canadian Soil Survey Committee and as a department head here at the University of Saskatchewan, I'm wondering if you could uh, give us a bit of perspective on that. So first of all, when and how did soil survey get started in Canada? Well, the, the first soil surveys in Canada were done in Ontario. In 1914, they started that work. And the work was done actually by a chemistry professor called A.J. Galbraith. And he was uh, advised by uh, a man from the U.S. Bureau of Soils, uh, George N. Coffey. And uh, basically, they were using, in southern Ontario, they were basically using the classification that had been developed for the United States. And it was a pretty general sort of classification. Uh, and it was based mainly on surficial geology and the texture of the soils. And it was actually quite a general classification as well, because there were only uh, nine soil series recognized in, uh, in southern Ontario as far, far north as Kingston. So uh, today, there would be probably several hundred soil series in that, in that same geographical area. Uh, Galbraith actually moved to the uh, University of Manitoba uh, in 1917 and, uh, and did some soil survey work there in the Red River Valley near Winnipeg. But unfortunately, he, uh, he died in the uh, 1918 flu influenza, uh, the uh, influenza epidemic, and that was the end of his work. And so there wasn't any work in Manitoba until 1927 when Professor Ellis uh, started soil survey. Uh, in the early 1920s, there was some work uh, began in Saskatchewan and in Alberta. In Saskatchewan, mainly by Professor Joel from the University of Saskatchewan, and in Alberta by uh, Professor Frank Wyatt, who was at the University of Alberta. Okay. So you mentioned that the early soil survey started with this surficial, uh, sur surficial geology approach. And I'm wondering if you could comment a little bit, because it seems to me that I've also heard discussion about more of a geographical approach to, uh, to soil classification. And so where did that idea come from? Well, I think uh, each, each area had their own classification system, but the first really important work on soil classification, I think, was done by Professor Ellis, who published a paper in 1932 it was uh, entitled a Field Classification for Use by the Soil Survey, and it definitely was a pedagogical or a geographical uh, sort of a, a emphasis to his classification. Uh, the classification recognized, uh, first and foremost, soil zones, or you know, re relatively large area with similar climate and vegetation that showed up in similar soil properties, especially color. Uh, beneath the so next layer, level to the soil zone was soil association, which brought in the kind of, uh, of parent material, and then therefore something of the geology and so forth, but also the, vegeta uh, the vegetation had been recognized at the soil zone level. And then individual kinds of soils were called soil associates. Uh, so somewhat the equivalent of what we would call a soil series today. Uh, and, and so the, the, that, that was the start of the, the work in, uh, the, the really, it was an important classification. And as we'll find out later on, it was actually adopted by the, uh, the National Soil Survey Committee as their first sort of trial classification. Okay. Well, it seems to me that there's also a lot of parallels between, certainly between our, our current classification system and the, and the Russian system. Now, this might be a bit of an aside, but is there, is there, there must have been a, a Russian influence in the early days of soil survey as well. Oh, oh yes, there certainly was. I mean, for one thing, and I've, heard, I've never been there, but I've uh, heard from some of my friends that the, the soils of the prairies and the soils of the Russian steppes are very similar, and you have the same kind of soil zones and so forth. So that, that, that right from the start was a similarity. As uh, Perf uh, Harold Moss says in some, one of his papers, the Russian texts were just becoming available in English, being translated, so that had an impact. And uh, several Russian scientists actually toured around Western Canada in 1927 after the World Soils Congress in, in Washington. But there's a sort of a personal element to it as well, involving Professor Ellis uh, and, uh, and Konstantin Nikiforov, who was a Russian. He was a Russian who had done his PhD at St. Petersburg University. He left Russia at the time of the Bolshevik Revolution and somehow ended up in the US. Uh, actually reconnected with the soil science community in 1927, and from there, who began working in, in Minnesota, and from Minnesota, I'm sure, connected with Professor Ellis somewhere south of Winnipeg in the Red River Valley as they were both working you know, along the 49th parallel. And he had quite an input, uh, impact, I think, on Ellis's idea about soils, not just the classification, this more pedological or geographical uh, classification, but also on Ellis's uh, book, The Soils of Manitoba, has a definite sort of uh, pedological or you know, like ecological kind of approach to soils, which really shows up uh, very well in, in that particular book. Okay. Well, 
just getting back to the, the geographic classification, I would think that it would be hard to implement the same geographic classification across a, a country like Canada to have a, na a national system. At what point did the soil surveyors really start getting together and discussing uh, things at a national level? Well, the, uh, there, there was a recognized need for a national system of soil classification, and the National Soil Survey Committee was established in 1940, but I guess because of the war, it didn't meet until 1945. They had their first meeting in Ottawa in May of 1945, and, and as it says in the account of the soil survey, it was the, for all the men involved in soil survey from, from across the Dominion were meeting for the first time. And uh, the, of course, the, uh, the mandate of the National Soil Survey Committee was much broader than just soil classification, all aspects of soil survey. But certainly soil classification was one of their you know, primary uh, emphases. And, uh, uh, they adopted in 1945 the Ellis Field classification as their first sort of uh, classification that they would try on a trial basis nation nationwide. But there always was some reservations, I think, about this classification. Um, the 1948 meeting of the, of the National Soil Survey Committee, which was held in, uh, in Guelph at the Uni uh, Ontario Agriculture College, was basically a, a critique of the, uh, of the uh, geographical classification and the recommendation that the, uh, the, the National Soil Survey Committee move more to a, a more, ta more taxonomic uh, classification. Okay, so that would be something more like what we have now. So at what point, you know, sort of along this timeline, would you say that the, the system started to look more like our, our current system? Well, I think that happened in, uh, in Saskatoon at the University of Saskatchewan in 1955. This was one of, the, I think, really important uh, meetings of the National Soil Survey Committee. And, uh, and there were three sort of major decisions there uh, made at, at Saskatoon that, that I think really influenced uh, this, the, the classification from then on. One, basically, is not to join with the Americans in developing their classification system, the system that came to be known as soil taxonomy. Uh, and they were, they were concerned that the American system was basically too complicated uh, with too sort of obscure uh, nomenclature and so forth. The names for the soils were made up terms that didn't make any sense. And so they didn't go with the Americans. Uh, uh, the second pretty important decision was the fact that they decided to move then from the Ellis classification uh, that they had tried on a trial basis starting in 1945, they decided to move then to a more taxonomic classification. And of course, the taxonomic classification, the classes at higher hierarchical levels, the orders and the great groups and so forth, are really uh, defined in, on a sort of a conceptual basis. And of course, they can change as the knowledge of the soil changes. Uh, so that, that was the start of it all. Uh, and certainly, uh, then there was a, another meeting of the, of the National Soil Survey Committee in 1960, which sort of solidified that. And uh, the decision was made in 1960 to basically, as it says in the, uh, in, the, in the proceedings, to enforce the classification, that the soil survey units across the country were required to use the soil survey in doing their, their regular mapping. I can remember that pretty well because I was working uh, the next summer in, on soil survey in Manitoba, and we were often asking whether the Eltona series or the, uh, you know, the Red River series would fit into a particular subgroup. Uh, you know, that ki those kind of questions were being asked. But certainly that was uh, what happened in 1960. And it, I think it's a good example of federal provincial sort of uh, cooperation because a lot of strong-minded individuals that had their own ideas about classification had to make some compromises in order to make the national classification work. Okay. So it seems to me then that by the time we, we get into the 60s, where soil survey is well underway across Canada. We've got the start of a, a classification system that's very similar to our current classification system in terms of its basis on uh, taxonomy as opposed to a more geographic system. And then we're also um, starting to see increasing organization at the, at the federal level, but maybe not the classification system isn't quite yet as clearly defined as it, as it is now. And 1968, I often hear that year being sort of marked as the, as the line that splits the, the first era and the second era of soil classification. So next time we'll talk a bit more about what, was, what happened in that next era that really affected the system that we use today. Thanks. I look forward to that. <laughs>